Hello, everybody. It is me. Is Nixium here with Crendor, who I assume hit the record button? Yes. I did, in fact, hit the record button. All right. So we are officially live. We're live on, well, we're live, but it's not going to be live when it's uploaded. Yeah. We're live on the, the YouTube in the past. Crazy stuff. Crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, dude. <laughs> well, I'm back. I just, I just got out of the hospital. You did. You got yeah. your gallbladder removed. I did. It's it is officially gone. I am one organ less. It's and uh, it was an experience. I want to know all about your experience. Well, you've told me some, but you know, I, I'll listen to gallbladder stories for years, nonstop. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just gonna warn everybody in advance. This is gonna be a gallbladder episode. <laughs> But this is the episode you've all been waiting for because we've heard like two years ago, you listened nonstop to Crendor talk about his gallbladder removal and his like the, the consequences of such. And now you get to listen to my version of things and how things proceeded. I'm ready. Yeah, I know you are. I don't know if they're <laughs> ready, but I know you are. <laughs> all right. So let me explain like what happened in a nutshell. I, I mean, this is a very, very long and complicated story because it went over a few days, but I'll keep it simple for your sake and for the sake of the audience. Mm -hmm. So pretty much what happened is uh, I got invited to this sort of pre-Thanksgiving dinner, and I went with my girlfriend and her friend, and we were going to her friend's mother's house for this dinner, this event, and... Uh, we get there, we have this massive Thanksgiving dinner, we meet like a bunch of new people, blah, blah, blah. Eventually, we go back to my house, we're chilling out, and all of a sudden, there's like that that feeling that I hadn't felt in two years since my last operation, where they stuck a big tube down my throat and they cleaned out my bile ducts. And I feel this feeling of like gallbladder pain coming on. It didn't hurt at first, but it was just there. It was like a tickle. And I was like, oh, my God. And, like, immediately the memories started coming back. Like, dude, this is gallbladder pain. So um, I sat up, chilled out. Girlfriend went to sleep. Everybody went to bed. I stayed awake, just sitting on the couch, waiting for the pain to pass. But the pain didn't pass until eventually the pain was pretty bad. Like, it was a was pretty bad call. And uh, I had to wake up my girlfriend. And I was like, dude, you got to take me to the hospital. Like, I ain't playing no games. At that point, I'd probably been in pain for about three or four hours. Hmm. Um, and I reached a point where I was in so much pain. Uh, I already told Crendor this off stream, but I, uh, or off recording, where I was in so much pain, like, I couldn't even really talk. Uh, I was, like, when I when I asked my girlfriend to take me to the hospital, I was like, like, you're in so much pain, you just can't even talk. Like, it's it's just agony. Mm -hmm. um, it, just pure agony. That's the only way to describe it. Went to the hospital. They shot me up with some morphine, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we spoke about me getting my gallbladder taken out. Um, they sent me home though with some pain pills and they were going to do the operation on another day and I was doing okay. Um, so pain pills, yada, 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 some antibiotics just to make sure, you know, the gallbladder isn't infected or anything. And I was like, all right. And we would talk about the operation and getting it at another time. <laughs> so, all right, well, that's fine. Well, less than 24 hours later, I was totally fine. And just later that night, that that very next day, the pain came back, and I was sitting there. I was talking with my girlfriend. The pain was at like a one, and she said, "Okay, well, let's not wait for the pain to hit like an eight or a nine again. So if it gets to like a four, we're gonna go back to the hospital." All right, fine. And sure enough, it started hitting a three or four, or whatever. I was like, "Yeah, let's go to the hospital before I end up in agony again." So we went back to the hospital. Uh, went back to the ER. Uh, they took us in the back eventually took like all my, you know, measurements and stuff, yada, yada, yada. And let me tell you something. All right. I'm just gonna be honest here. Mm. The, the first time I went to the hospital for gallbladder issues, um, back when I had my first operation, like two years ago, with the whole tube down my throat thing. When I walked into that building, um, like within 
like 30 minutes, I was being treated. I had an IV in my arm. I was being given like morphine and pain meds and stuff. I was in no pain and no agony and no discomfort from that point until I stepped out of the doors and the operation was done. The hospital near my house, uh, granted, I do live in a little bit of a podunk town in the Mm. middle of like nowhere in North (laughs) Carolina. I know the stereotype is that, like, as a YouTuber, you have, like, billions of dollars, but it's not true. I mean, I just live in a tiny house, like, in the middle of this, like, little backwater town. And so the hospital isn't the best. And so I was just – this whole hospital experience for me was just agony. Um, Like, when they took us to the back and they were like, okay, yeah, just wait in this little back room and eventually we'll come in and treat you, put the IV in and blah, blah, blah. I mean – me and the lady, we were in there for probably about like an hour or like an hour and a half and nobody was coming to see us. And at this point, like my pain had reached like an eight or a nine. So I'm just bent over leaning against the wall because you can't lay down when you're in this much pain for those that don't know. Like you you have to stand up and the only way to get some relief is to like bend over a little bit at like a 45 degree angle. And even then, it doesn't do much. So I'm bent against this wall, drooling out of my mouth on the ground. Just my whole body is shaking from the sheer agony of it. Like, you know, the poor lady's just sitting there trying to talk to me and trying to, like, say comforting things. I can't even respond to her. And eventually, she got so pissed off, you know, she walked out and was like, hey, are are you guys going to, like, come in here and take care of this guy? And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll get to him. Don't worry. 45 minutes later, (laughs) you know, finally someone – well, no, 45 minutes later, she had to go and talk to them again. And then they were like, oh, yeah, sorry, we forgot. (laughs) And then they came in and put an IV in me, which keep in mind they had to stick me uh, two different times because the first time they stuck me, uh, they blew my vein. Oh, And I remember – yeah, I was looking away. <laughs> I was looking away because I don't want to see them shoving a needle in my arm. Mm-hmm. And I just remember them saying, oh, that doesn't look good. And then they started tapping my arm. And they were like, does that hurt? Does that hurt? I'm like, no. Like, oh, that doesn't look good. And I'm like, what's wrong? Like, oh, it's just, it's just your vein blue. <laughs> and, I, I, and they're like touching my arm. And I can feel this giant blob or something like that they're touching on my arm i ain't looking at it though (laughs) so whatever the dude covers it up pulls out the iv sticks my other arm instead good job thank you (laughs) as if i'm not in in enough pain at this point also they had to make me sit down to put the iv in so sitting down i mean even more pain because again you can't sit or lay down when you're in this much agony mm. so i'm in more agony being stuck with a needle going ah, ah. <laughs> and then and then they're like all right we're gonna give you some morphine now so they give me like a little bit of morphine and it did nothing it took the pain from like a nine to like a seven maybe a six and i'm like can you give me more like i'm still in agony no no, we can't. We can't give you any more. We we have to start with this low dose. Oh my God! Please give me more. So I'm like begging these guys for morphine, which eventually they give it to me. Like thank God. And then they gave me this anti-inflammatory drug that really helped. Uh, long story short, when they when they did eventually take my gallbladder out, uh, the doctor said. Um, Well, I actually heard something different from my mom and my girlfriend. Uh, Mm -hmm. One of them said that my gallbladder was three times the size of a normal gallbladder. The other said it was five times the size. Oh, my God. I don't know. We're just going to say four times. We're going to meet him in the middle there. Mm -hmm. Uh, It it was just so swollen because of like how it was just so swelled up. It wasn't infected or anything. It was just like uh, when they did the ultrasound, they determined that I, I didn't really even have that many gallstones. Most people, you know, the vast majority of people, even you guys listening, have gallstones. Mm-hmm. It's just they're not – they just don't become an issue for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, but for a lot of people, they do. Uh, and so for me, I'm one of those people just like, you know, one of many millions of Americans. Mm-hmm. And so uh, they say you don't really have that many. It's just that you've got this like these few that are getting into your bile ducts and they're causing the issues. So we have to you know get your gallbladder out. Yeah. So all right, then fine. they say um, to interrupt. Uh, oh, yeah, you yeah, can ahead. you can 
like live with it, but even and they can check you for gallstones. But oh, you have gallstones, and if they're even if they're not a problem, and even if they were to open your gallbladder and like remove them and then like sew you back up and keep it in there, you're prone mm-hmm. to getting them again. So they're you're yeah. better off just getting it out entirely. Yeah, exactly. They explained all that to me too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, they eventually uh, took me into a room, like a like a surgery waiting room. Um, they said, "Yeah, well, you know, we're going to do surgery." And at that point, I don't know exactly how long I was in the hospital waiting before my actual surgery. It was probably like ten or eleven hours or something. Uh, you know, God bless the lady friend. Like she never left my side. Like not well. She did leave one time because she had to go take the dogs out back at my house because you know the dogs we just had to leave them there. Mm-hmm. So she had to leave at one point. Uh, but she was there the whole time. You know, just you know sitting with me. So I, I'm really thankful to her for that. Um, and so it was just like 10, 11, however many hours it was of me just being in agonizing pain, calling the nurses saying, please come in here and give me something. Then they would show up. I'm not kidding. They'd show up like 45 minutes to an hour later to the point, like, like my pain would be at like a six because the drugs would be wearing off. And, like, by the time they got into my room, it was, like, a 9 or a 10. And I'm, like, laying in the bed just, like, shaking in agony. Then they'd come in and be like, oh, can't give you any more drugs. You have to wait, like, 30 more minutes or, like, an hour. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, no, no. And, you know, before some, you know, like, like they would, they would they'd come in and say, like, like, oh, no, 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 you shouldn't be in any pain right now because the previous medicines should still be working. No, the fuck they weren't. I'm fucking dying. Like I'm laying there, like, uh, uh, like, like dying, and like, no, the the you shouldn't be in any pain at this point. Like, uh, uh, woman, god damn it! Like, <laughs> I was like, look at uh, like again, you know, for uh, the lady friend, she got fucking pissed off, and she was like, look at him, like, look at the guy, like, uh, give him something, like, fuck. And so it was, it was a lot of her being pissed off at the nurses. Um, and pissed off at the staff. I was pissed off at the staff, but I couldn't say anything, you know? Mm. So, like, whatever. So, blah, blah, blah. It was just alternating between me being in agony, me begging the nurses for medicine. Finally, they'd give me something. Morphine didn't do anything, guys. Like, I would get morphine. They would. That wouldn't do shit. Like, morphine would take it down, like, two notches, and I would still be in agony. The only thing that helped me was that anti-inflammatory drug. Because mm-hmm. my, my gallbladder was so swollen. So when oh, they yeah. gave me that, it would swell down and I could sleep and I could rest and I was good. And then when that wore off, I was like, oh, my God, help me. Like, I was an <laughs> <laughs> So blah, blah, blah. Long story short, what happens is they tell me, oh, you're going to have surgery at 11 o'clock in the morning, like to get your gallbladder out. OK, fine. Cool. Nice. Um, My girlfriend, it's like. Like eight o'clock in the morning, she says, Hey, look, I gotta go home. I gotta let the dogs out, gotta let them use the bathroom, gotta feed them. I'll be right back. I don't live that far from the hospital. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, Okay, I'll see you soon. So she leaves. I go back to sleep. And then I wake up like 15 minutes later. Nurses are in the room. Okay, Mr. Smith, get ready. We're taking you into surgery. And I look <laughs> at the clock and I'm like, Aren't you guys two hours early? And they're like, Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. We're just taking you in right now. So, so I quickly text, you know, I text the girlfriend. I'm like, hey, I'm going into surgery. So she has to run back up to the hospital. I'm in the surgery prep room uh, when she shows up. Mm-hmm. We sat in that surgery prep room, by the way, for about two hours <laughs> like doing nothing. I'm in agony again at this point. And like the, the doctors come in and they're like, oh, hey there, Mr. Smith. You ready for your operation? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> please <laughs> cut me open please like i'm serious like you guys listening that have never had surgery before you might think oh surgery is so scary it's so intimidating dude when you're in agony it can't come fast enough <laughs> yeah you're like dude just just fucking cut me open police for the love of satan just do it <laughs> like i don't even fucking care at this point like that's that's how fucking bad it can get and they're like, and I'm like, please, can you give me something? Like, I'm in so much fucking pain right now. And they're like, can't give you any drugs before the surgery, Mr. Smith. You're going to have to wait it out. Well, then fucking hurry up. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so like, all right. So we sit there for like two hours. Finally, they take me in. They do the surgery. Here's the thing. When I had my first operation two years ago, it was not a big deal. They, they knocked me out. I woke up. I was in the recovery room, really, really trippy, and I was totally fine. This time, it was freaky because I remember laying on the table and them, like, you know, putting the anesthesia into me. And then I, I was gone. I closed my eyes. I was gone. And then immediately, all I could hear was just these women around me saying, you need to breathe. You need to breathe. You need to start breathing deeply. You're not breathing correctly. You need to breathe. And, like, I can't see anything or, like, smell anything or taste anything. All I can hear are these women just, like, yelling this at me. Like, breathe. You need to breathe. Breathe. So I'm just, like, <sighs> just doing my best to breathe. And, and what it was is when I went to the doctor or when I went to the hospital, I had a sore throat. And when they do an operation on you, they put a tube down your throat and into your lungs. So you, mm -hmm. you know, breathe during the operation. So, like, on top of having a sore throat, now my throat is all cut up because of that thing that was in my throat. So my throat was full of mucus and dried blood so i could barely even breathe and so when i finally regained consciousness fully like you know my internal computer reset and all my senses mm. are back on i was just like <clears throat> just trying to cough this crap out and crendor knows this from experience that after you have gallbladder surgery coughing sucks oh yeah oh dude it's bad it's uh it's I remember, like, I remember they when they gave me uh, my first pain med, and mm -hmm. then I, like, ate a graham cracker with it or something, but, like, I took the pain med, and then I started eating the graham cracker, so I got kind of nauseous, and I was like, if I throw up, I think I might just, like, rip my stomach open, like, it was, yeah. it was so painful. Dead coughing is the worst, and, like, me, I have a... Like, I have a constant cough. Like, I've had it for most of my life. Like, I just cough all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mixture of allergies and just, you know, nasal drip and a lot of things. So I cough all the time. So for me, it's, like, extra bad. So I'm laying in this bed, like, going, eh, 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 <laughs> just trying to get this crap out of my throat. It's actually uh, and, funny because I thought of that when I was, th I was like, wait, don't you have a cough? And I was like, that sounds, yeah. I was like thinking, I was like, that's going to be awful. I remember I had like a bag of frozen peas. I would just hold over the incision and whenever I had to like cough or do something, I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it sucks. It's yeah. just so painful. Like It's just ultimate soreness in your mm -hmm. stomach. Blah, blah, blah. They wheeled me into the uh, recovery room. I'm there for a little bit. Um, I'm laying down for a bit. The anesthesia is making me act all loopy and weird. Girlfriend and my mom is there at this point. They tell me, or well, the, the lady friend, she's like, you know, hey, you need to get up. You need to walk around a little bit. You need to walk off that anesthesia. So it's been only like a few hours since the operation, but I get up. I'm kind of walking around like the, the recovery room. Mm -hmm. Eventually, uh, they bring me some food. I don't I, I eat a little bit of food like I eat like a couple of peas and like a carrot like a very small carrot very mm -hmm. slowly uh, I ate some jello and I drank some water and I was fine I, I mean I felt like weird but I, I was fine walked around felt okay got dressed and I left like only a few hours after surgery I left and uh, my girlfriend drove me to my mom's house and I stayed with my mom for, I think like three days. Uh, she took care of me and watched over me. And honestly, like, here's the good thing. Everybody's different, but, uh, I recovered extremely fast from my surgery, like stupid fast. Like the day after the surgery, like I woke up that morning, um, cause we got there at night to my mom's house. Uh, like I woke up that morning and I was really sore and yet yeah, hurt to cough. Like it was incredible soreness. My neck was sore, my legs, my mm. stomach, everything. But behind the soreness, I felt great. And I was like, I was eating like very, just a little bit, but I was eating. Uh, and I started like trying different foods. Like I, you know, I ate like some very small little homemade pancakes that morning that my mom made for me. Really, really small ones. Uh, I had like two 
Uh, and then I had like some, uh, what else did I have that morning? I had some strawberries, I remember. Um, I didn't drink any dairy or do anything like that, but I drank some tea. Uh, and then like later on that evening, I had a little bit of like some bread and a little bit of meat some like ham and I was fine. And then the next day, I ate more food. And then the next day, I ate even more food. Like the less than 48 hours after the surgery, I went to Barnes and Noble with my mom and got a puzzle and got a book. And then the day after that, I was driving my car around my mom's town. Like I got better incredibly fast. And that like even really now, nice. it, yeah, like I was fine. Like within two days, like I was fine. I was still sore, but I was fine. Um, like I, I had eaten anything that you could imagine. I had tried it and. I still, to this day, I've had no issues with anything I've eaten. I've had no diarrhea. I, I've had no stomach issues, no nausea, nothing. Like, I'm totally fine. And honestly, like, it's weird. Like, ever since I got my gallbladder taken out, like, I feel, uh, maybe it's just a mental thing, but I feel, like, so much, like, healthier like I, it's it's weird. It's like I can see color better. I can think better. It, I described it to my mom. I was like, it, it's almost like, even though like my gallbladder wasn't causing me issues, I don't I don't know if there's any science behind this, but it's almost like it was like poisoning me, even huh. though like there was no pain or anything. And now that it's gone, I feel great. Yeah. And like, I don't know. Like I just feel more energetic now, and blah blah blah. And I, I think really the only reason why I recovered so quickly is uh, because, or it's because I theorize just before I started going to the hospital or before I did go to the hospital, excuse me. um, I was in the gym like every day, like running a mile every day, run one mile. I was doing trail hiking. I was lifting, you know, I really was getting big into like my fitness again. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I had lost a ton of weight and uh, that might have also contributed to the the gallstone attacks because I've read that yeah. if you lose weight too quickly, it can cause that. Yep. Uh, but I was doing great. Like I, I was doing fantastic. And, you know, I've been reading like every morning for at least 30 minutes for the past like nine months or so now, 10 months. So I feel like mentally like really sharp uh, physically. I feel really strong. I feel really good. And so, like, I went into this surgery, like, feeling good, like, feeling strong and healthy. And I came out of it feeling stronger and healthier. Um, The only thing that I would say, and maybe you know this, and then Mm -hmm. this will be the end of my story. uh, I will say that the only thing that I've noticed since getting my gallbladder removed is I cannot eat as much as I used to. Huh. Like it's really like it's it's like I can like if I wanted to, I could sit down and like, you know, eat like a big meal. Right. But I got to like force myself to do it. Why? Because like, why is that? Yeah. I don't know. It, it's it's almost like my it, it, it's like my stomach has like shrunk or something mm. like I don't know how to describe it. Like, let's say let, let's take like an average pizza. I'll create a metaphor here. Right. Normally, I could eat like like half of a pizza. Like, let's say like a medium-sized pizza from like mm-hmm. Papa John's. I could eat like, in this metaphor, like half of that. Now, I would eat like two slices. And I'm like, all right, I'm good now. Like, yeah. I'm fine. Like that, like, that is maximum I feel full. Huh. Whereas like before, I could eat like half. And then that's like, okay, now I'm full. Maybe from like your week of recovering and all that, that like shrunk your stomach a bit too. Maybe I don't know, but but I kind of like it because ever since I got my gallbladder removed, uh, I've continued to lose weight. I have not gone back to the gym though, not yet, and I haven't started running or anything yet because I don't want to push it. Yeah. Um, but I, I was thinking about going back to the gym today, but I'm giving it one more day because tomorrow, or technically later today, because it's now ten past midnight. Um, I have a doctor's appointment where they're just gonna like. It's just a checkup to make sure, oh, yeah. like, you Post know, how up. are you doing? Yeah. yeah. So they're just going to do a quick checkup on me. And if the doctor's like, wow, you're doing pretty good, 
I'll be like, hey, can I go back to the gym? Because I kind of want to like run and like lift again. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I enjoy doing. And they're gonna be like, yep, go ahead. Yeah, like and they so say, uh, patients feel like doing activities within a few days after having their operation. You should not lift anything heavier than eight to ten pounds for two weeks because you risk like hernias and shit. Man, fuck that shit. I rearranged the furniture <laughs> in my other room the other day. All right. I had well. this giant bed, and I was, like, rearranging it with, like, my mom's husband and whatnot. Like, it was great. <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you do you. I mean, I, I'm already, I, I was already at the point where I was like, I'm not touching anything. Well, I didn't even lift weights then, so I was like, no problem. No so, problem. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but it's a part of me thinks that might be why I took a while to recover, because I didn't really lift weights or do anything like that back then. Like, I just, you know. I didn't do anything. Did, did, did. You, you told the story about like what happened after your gallbladder operation, right? Uh, like with the, the thing in the thing. Uh, yeah. Why, you want okay. me to tell uh, it again? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, well, that was my biggest fear going into this operation. Oh, yeah. Having to get a catheter. Mm-hmm. I was terrified because I was thinking about you. I was like, oh, my God, please, for the like, for <laughs> the love of all that is holy, please bless me with the magical ability to pee after this operation. <laughs> and I remember this might be a little TMI, but I don't give a shit. You guys are here to <laughs> hear the truth. And I'm the most honest person on the Internet. Yeah. Like when I got up, like I was in the recovery room, you know, back in my hospital room or whatever. And I got up. I mentioned that the girlfriend was like, hey, you need to get up and move around. Mm. I had to pee. And I got my little plastic, you know, nurse pee yeah. jug. <laughs> and I was like, here we go. You know, and I slipped all 27 inches of German heritage <laughs> into that fucking, <laughs> into, that, into that pee pod. And I was like, ah. <laughs> oh, my God, I can't pee. Ah. It was the longest pee I've ever had. It was like 15 minutes of me trying to pee. <laughs> like, one drop at a time like and finally i finished and i was like oh my god i peed but that was so fucking difficult yeah and then over is, the next like rough. over the next two or three days my power to pee slowly came back mm -hmm. but the, the power to pee normally <laughs> yeah yeah so there's there's a fun story for you guys well the what i realized actually is that in addition from just healing slowly because i wasn't like working out or like you know my muscles took forever to heal because of that but like, hmm. um, the anesthetic is kind of what was worse yeah. for me because what happens is your bladder is asleep from the anesthetic still, like your whole body's still asleep. So like what happened was, uh, they kept telling me like, I'm like, I can't pee. So they're like, oh, maybe we'll just drink more water. And what the, mm. you know, a good nurse, uh, or <laughs> anybody there should have said is, Hey, no, don't do that. Cause then you're just going to have to pee more. But mm -hmm. you can't because your gut or your bladder's asleep, and you know it's not possible. So instead of just, just like, oh, wait, a, like wait a while, don't drink anything, and you'll probably pee on your own in like a few hours or something. Be like, oh, okay. But instead, they're just like, yeah, <laughs> just keep drinking water. And so I hit the point where I was like, I, I am dying. <laughs> I am dying, and I can't pee. <laughs> and so that's when they're just like, we'll do the cath. But it's like what you said. You hit the point. I'm just like, just shove the tube up there, man. Like, <laughs> fuck it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, just do it. <laughs> yeah. And oh, like, my God. <laughs> at first, you're just like, eh! but then you're like, ah, it's all the urine. <laughs> 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 the urine starts flooding out. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty much my reaction. But the, oh the worst God. part is then just like, fucking having that shit in because then you're like god i don't want this tube up my dick anymore right yeah so <laughs> and I, I hear it's a big tube it's uh, honestly you i know, don't want to google it i don't listen i don't even want to remember it <laughs> i'm gonna look i'm gonna google it all i know is uh they shove that up there and then whoo i'm look, i'm googling <laughs> it i want to see it Oh my god, I'm gonna have to look up a picture of it actually in a dick, aren't I? <laughs> it's just seeing tubes. This is not giving me a sense of scale. All right, <laughs> typing it in. Oh Jesus! <laughs> oh yeah. So it's. Uh, oh listen, my god. All I know is when okay. they when they yank that shit out, 
Yeah. Like, they got a little thing. I think it, like, lubes it up or whatever, so it, like, slides out easily. But they still got to fucking yank it out. So, like, <laughs> they, like, pull it out. Yeah. And they're like, if you can't pee in, like, 10 hours, come back. And I was like, oh, I'll pee. <laughs> so I was like, I swear to God, I'll pee. So I did. And that was probably the greatest urination of my life because I was like, that's it. I don't need it. It's gone. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so that was just a fun time. And then the other thing that uh, the anesthetic did, I almost said the amnesia. The, the amnesia came yeah, in. Yeah. The other thing it did was it took my, like, digestive, I guess, like, you know, colon and whatever, like, time to wake up. Uh, because I didn't go to the bathroom for like three or four days, so oh. it was just like oh, like like poo eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were like, uh, you know, it might just be taking a while because it took your bladder a while to wake up too. Uh, mm. which by the way, the worst part about before I got the catheter in was I feel like I probably would have been able to pee if I just waited to that point and didn't drink anything because it felt like I was getting that <laughs> that feeling of like, oh yeah, I could probably pee out. And I was like, holy Jesus, if I <laughs> if I just not drank anything. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. but then I wouldn't have had a fun story. Uh, That's so, true. so the other thing was I couldn't like, I couldn't pass gas, right? Because you can't like fart because your digestion's just like, Bleh. so <laughs> like, I would just, I remember the third I day I had to go back to the ER, which is when I got the catheter <laughs> out or the second day. I don't remember. Uh, and I was All just right. sitting there and like, it felt like I ate like 20 cans of beans and I just like was sitting there bloated and I was just like, Ugh. and I remember they gave me morphine and I was like, it uh, uh, didn't do anything, but I, it helped. It, I went from like a nine to like an eight. I was like, all yeah. right, <laughs> like, sure. All right. It was... It's like, you're still in pain, but you just feel like an idiot in pain. <laughs> yeah. You're just like, dude, I'm in pain. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. it was. It was so bad. And there I am. I'm just like in pain like that. And I got a like pee bag next to me too. So it's just like all these things. Uh, that's that's what made it so bad. The actual like if I didn't have either of those things, I would have been like, hey, you know, I'm getting better probably or whatever. But that those two yeah, things yeah. were just an awful experience to say the least. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know, I'm going to say something else. I know I'm going to ruin my image among the children when I say this, but I'm going to say this. <laughs> you know what was one of the most embarrassing things about this gallbladder situation for me? What? When I went to the doctor the very first time. <laughs> right. True story, guys. When I went to the doctor the first time, I was having the first pain attack. They asked me the question, are you a smoker? And I told them the following. I said, yes, I do smoke a pipe or a cigar on occasion throughout the week. You know, I'll smoke my pipe maybe like once mm. every two or three days. Um, and I also had to tell her, I was like, and I admit that less than 24 hours ago, <laughs> I smoked weed for the very first time in my life, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I finally smoked weed for the very first time. No, you wouldn't How was do it? that. What? I said no. You wouldn't do that, my idol. <laughs> my idol. <laughs> that is a story for another time. I will just say, for the time being, that I thought I was Noah for a little while, <laughs> and I was trying to get my dog to get on the ark. What the fuck am I talking about? Stay tuned for another episode of Friend or Nixium, and I'll tell you that, that story. I got <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> and I did not mean to get that fucked up. <laughs> get on the arc. <laughs> it was good. It's one of those things where, like, I, re I always love how people are like, man, I'd love to see Krendor on the on weed. And then You're it's like. You're always on weed. I'm always on weed, man. But the few times I've I've done the weed, you know, I took eight marijuanas. A little too many to inject, clearly. <laughs> Uh, okay, you know, I mean, I can save that for the next thing as well. Yeah, all right. Yeah, but next listen, episode in, uh, could be crazy this, weed stories. In uh, we got less than a month. That's legal. Right. I can smoke that on like Twitch and be like, "Hey, Twitch, you got some dank hey, swag town yeah. USA today? <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's legal here." Although yeah, I dude. Think the federal law is still like whatever, but nobody cares. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> dude, it's legal in my state, yo. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But 
in regards to like i mean getting back on the gallbladder thing in regards to like going to the bathroom like going number two i mm. didn't have any issues with that either like within 24 hours i well no it was like within 48 hours i was going to the bathroom and i've been on the regular ever since huh. so i mean like i said like i i just was totally fine I, I got better incredibly fast and i spoke to some of my mother's friends um, who also got their gallbladders taken out. Because for those that don't know, like getting your gallbladder taken out is a very common thing. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not common. like a like one in 10,000 or 50,000 people. I think it's like, what is it now? Like one in four people? It's a lot of people. Like it, yeah. it, it's a lot of fucking people get their gallbladders taken out. And a lot of you guys listening, you guys probably will get your gallbladders taken out one day. Maybe. Yeah. I know uh, um, I've had a lot of people, even people come in my chat and they'll just be like, Crendor, I know you got your gallbladder out. I got to get mine out. What happens? And I'm like, well, here's some uh, material to listen to <laughs> Yeah. Uh, of me talking about it. There you go. Yeah. And it's not necessarily, you know, for those that might have like a misconception, I mean, it's not necessarily like getting your gallbladder is not for just people that are like... Like, it doesn't always have to do with, like, eating a bad diet or, like, being overweight or, like, I mean, just look at Crendor, you know, being overweight. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not, like, anybody could have an issue with their gallbladder, like, of any and shape be, and any uh, size. It could be genetic, too, because my aunt and my grandma had theirs taken out, so it's, like, yeah. a genetic thing, too. Yeah, so, and, you know, again, like, someone like me, I didn't even really have that gallstones. Like mm -hmm. compared to like someone that would actually get like a lot of them. Like I didn't even have any when they did the ultrasound. They just said, oh, you don't got many, but they're just causing issues. So we just got to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right. So, um, but yeah, man, I, I'm just really, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I mean, I got my medical bill in today. Uh, you know, how much I got to pay and everything. It's definitely a little bit of a woozy. Let me tell you what, it's a, a little kick in the dick, but <laughs> We'll manage, <laughs> you know, one bill at a time. You know, yeah. we we will manage over the next several years and pay it off bit by bit. Um, and that's okay. And uh, and uh, I'm excited to get back in the gym. I really want to start running again because uh, I uh, I really was enjoying running a mile every single day. That was fun. Like it made me feel great. And um, I, I also <laughs> I bought a weighted vest uh a few weeks ago before the surgery so i was doing this trail hiking with like this big weighted vest on my shoulders i think it's uh i think it's 80 pounds oh wow so you know just walking around with that i mean let me tell you one thing don't do it every day otherwise you're gonna <laughs> yeah. kill yourself but you know maybe like once a week uh when you take that thing off and just drop it on the ground first you feel like goku all right <laughs> you know taking off his weighted clothing is it like a then huge weight off your shoulders you could say that, yes. <laughs> then after you feel like Goku, you feel like Samurai Jack from that one episode where he tied the giant rock to his back to jump good. Remember that? I haven't actually seen it. Oh, my God. All right. And then after that, you're like, ah, because you feel so light and you feel like you can jump really high. And then you realize that you can't. <laughs> That's a good feeling. That's pretty cool. Yeah, dude. I uh, yeah. I was gonna say, oh yeah, it took me like a year and a half for my digestion to like actually normal out. What, what like weird. what was wrong with your digestion? Like were you just feeling nauseous or? I get like some nausea if I overeat fats. I'd get like some colon irritation where it just it just felt like it was irritated. Honestly, I think the like not having a gallbladder just is like acting my is kind of making my IBS worse. It was kind of more like m acting as a catalyst towards my other problems that I had. Okay. So I think that's all it was. Uh, Cause I knew I had like mild gastritis and I had IBS. So then I saw okay. legit three gastro doctors and they were just like, I mean, you've had all these tests done. We do blood tests. I think I've had more blood tests than someone that's like 80 to be honest. Okay. <laughs> uh, they all scanned right. me over. Uh, like they did that uh, when I was in the hospital in the ER, they did a cat scan. Cause when I had my pain, they're like, could be a bowel blockage. And they're like, cat scans will literally show us like anything. And like mm. that's wrong inside you so they're like that's it's literally fine you had all these things they're just like yeah you're fine it's just you know probably ibs or what do they dis no functional dyspepsia i was like well thank god it's functional not dysfunctional 
So mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what'd be worse. So then I guess they're right. Cause after like, uh, about, I think it was, when would it be? Uh, it happened two years ago and about five or six months ago, I started mm-hmm. being able to eat whatever again. Uh, okay. Like it was like a switch flipped and everything was fine. And now I've been fine. I'll get like some stomach irritation if I have like too much coffee or don't eat enough really? and I get like stomach acid or whatever. But like outside of that, like it's been completely like day and night. Yeah. I mean, even today, like my mom, she was here for a little bit, you know, visiting, checking up on me, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, we called the hospital and, you know, took care of like the bill stuff and just got my payments all sorted out. Um, and, uh, you know, we went out to lunch and I was like, oh, where do you want to go? She's like, oh, I'll just go to McDonald's. So, like, we just had McDonald's. And I mean, even that, I'm totally fine. Yeah. Like, I've had like three cups of coffee today. No, like, I, I've, like, I feel completely fine. The only difference that I've found is just, I just can't eat as much. Yeah. I just can't, I just can't do it. And I'm not complaining about that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's healthier to eat, like, you know, constant smaller portions, like anyway, hmm. instead of like yeah, overloading like, your body. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, all I know is I, I will say this. I'm very thankful that I got the thing taken out. Um, it is amazing. It's a great like comfort in my mind knowing that if I do eat something, like let's say, you know, like Crendor comes over tomorrow night and we have a pizza party. Woo, you know, pizza and wings. You know, I, I it's a great comfort knowing that I can go to bed and not worry about like waking up in the middle of the night with an agonizing gallstone attack. <laughs> yeah. Like that's amazing. I mean, at worst it's like, oh shit, I'm gonna have diarrhea, but even then I'm not having that either. Well, I so, know like, you I, it, uh, it, I know you like were talking about how you feel like it was poisoning you, right? Y- Which, yeah. I mean, it's possible that it could have like had little bouts of inflammation or something where it just kind of irritated you and like a subconscious level or you're just kind of like, hey, you know, but like, I mean, you never know. Yeah, it's it's like uh, to explain that point further, it's like, it, like, like you said, it's like a subconscious thing. It's like you didn't know it was there. You didn't know it was affecting you, mm-hmm. but it was. Um, I've noticed that since getting my gallbladder out, I feel like, like I, I'm sure there's like nothing to back this up and maybe it's just totally a mental thing, but, uh, I feel more awake during the day. Uh, I feel more alert. I feel like I can see better. I feel like I can breathe better. I notice that I don't cough as much as I used to. Because like I said, I've, I've had a cough like my whole life, but I don't cough as much. Huh. Um, I I have not been going to the gym and I haven't been doing my running, but I'm, I still feel very strong, uh, both physically and mentally. And uh, I just feel like good. Like I just feel like, like refreshed. I don't know. How, I don't know how to describe it. So that's what I mean when I say I'm really thankful that I got this thing taken out, medical debt or no medical debt, it doesn't matter to me. I'll deal with it. Yeah. It's like so, you're just paying really for just the like life change, like a positive life change. Yeah. I've also been, uh, like before I uh, got my gallbladder taken out, I haven't been doing this recently, which I want to get back to doing it. Uh, I was doing meal prepping mm-hmm. uh, for a few weeks beforehand. That was a lot of fun. Uh, so I want to get back to doing that, especially once I get back in the gym. Uh, that helped a lot with like the weight that I was losing. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I've started. Uh, I don't know. I've I've just I've been reading more lately. I've started like budgeting, for, like for fun, in mm-hmm. like a notebook. And I don't know. I just I don't know. I just feel good. I've been trying to do because uh, I realized on my phone I can make little note like checklists. So I've been making okay. like checklists every day and I do like kind of like a to-do list, but it's like when you write it down, you're kind of like, oh, I got to scratch it off, do whatever with this. I could be like, oh, I'll just delete it, add like a new thing, or I'll be like, oh, that's another thing I got to add. And then I'll just do a little like checkbox and it makes it feel good. Even if it's like a uh, schedule an appointment for this thing, and then I'm like, check. And then it just feels like I accomplished something. 
for the day. Yeah. I, I have a, uh, it's actually sitting right next to me right now. Um, I have a desk planner that I keep in typically my reading room because mm -hmm. I have my office, which is this room where my big PC is. And then I have a reading room and that's where I, I just read in there. Mm -hmm. um, I read and I smoke my pipe. Um, and my desk planner has a massive to-do list, you know, urgent notes, important things. And every day, uh, my typical schedule is I wake up, I drink coffee, I eat breakfast, I read for 30 minutes, then I make my desk planner to-do list, kind of like what you just said, and then I just mm -hmm. check it off throughout the day. Yeah. So today's been a chill day for me, though. I haven't really done anything, like, work-wise, aside from, you know, doing this podcast, just because the holidays just ended. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah. I was spending time with like the girlfriend and her family. And that was, Oh, that was a trip unto itself, you know, hanging out with the family for that long. Then I had to hang out with my family. So this is like my first day, like to myself in like a little while. So I've just been enjoying it. Just kind of just chilling, going for walks, drinking coffee, yeah. you know, reading. And I also started writing my, uh, my book. Oh yeah. You were telling me about that. Yeah, maybe we should save that for another episode, though. That's true. We probably need all the material we can get. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we've already got a weed episode planned now. <laughs> We're going to be know? doing, like, two of these a month, too. So, like, you know. Yeah, I, I would like to do it where, I think we talked about it in the last episode, I like to do it where, like, one episode comes out, like, on the 15th of each month, and then the next episode comes out on the very last day of each month. Yeah. I think it's a good, uh, a good amount. Yeah, we kind of missed the end of November just because of the holidays and, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we could release this video like, well, what is today technically at the time of us recording? This uh, is technically December the 3rd. Yeah. I mean, we could either release this later today or tomorrow. I, mean, I don't know. Whenever yeah, you want to do it. I think it. it's close enough to the, what was it, 30th or whatever. Be, yeah, yeah. It yeah. still counts. We can always do it tomorrow. Okay, we can just do it tomorrow then. Yeah. All right. You got that planned. Yeah. On all, like alive. <laughs> That's usually a discussion we have after the recording's over. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. That's all right. Nice. But yeah, man, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. That's my story. I mean, do you have any like questions for me? Anything you want to know in particular based on what you went through versus what I went through? Um, yeah, I was trying to think. Uh, let's see. I know, like, did you have to, did you have, like, anything you'd hold over your incision? Like I said, I'd have, like, a bag of peas. And I just, like, when I'd cough or whatever, I'd, like, push into it because it just felt good. Uh, no, I didn't do anything like that. The thing that I did is I quickly had to develop this breathe out technique whenever I did anything. Like, if I was like getting into bed, anytime I made like a movement or something, mm. like climbing into bed was like a 10 step process. Like, oh, it's like, okay, lean over, put one knee up, put the other knee up, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And every time I'd have to <sighs> breathe out and then make the movement while holding my breath. Mm. Because if I breathe in while making a movement, it expands my stomach and that, you know, expands the wound sites and that would make it hurt. Mm -hmm. so breathing out and holding it would allow me to move around and there would be little to no pain um, or soreness, I should say. It was just soreness. It wasn't even pain. Um, here's a question for you, actually. How long did you keep your bandages on your little wounds from the surgery sites before you took them off? Uh, well, I actually had like an appointment with the doctor, and that's where like they took it off. How long after the surgery was that? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I want to say like a week or two. Okay, all right. Yeah, because I I took uh like my big patches off some time ago, and then they have those little things on there. Yeah. Um, I, like I took those off like two days ago. Mm hmm. And I mean, my stomach looks fine. I you mean, kind of get I mean, a wonky belly belly button. Cause that's really no, my like, belly button's fine. Oh, uh, really? Well, where'd they cut you? Yeah, my, uh, my belly button. And then, like, yeah. three other holes. Well, I guess that's the thing. Um, is like, e I still, like, if you look at my belly button, it looks pretty normal. But, like, it has, like, a bit of a scar thing in it still. So, it's like, I, don't, I mean, I don't, 
it's not like you'd look at it and be like, oh my god, but like it's just slightly there. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, like mine, like, I mean, my belly button looks completely normal. Like everything looks normal. Although one thing, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, mm. but the hospital that I went to, uh, was your gallbladder surgery done by hand or did a robot do it? Robot. Okay, yeah, me too. Yeah, they, uh, they I think it's called laparoscopic, and that's the one where they do like three little holes and then like the belly button thing to take it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah cause, otherwise I mean, like, they gotta cut you open. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, even like the little like hole sites on my belly, like, like honestly, like if I look at them, like you can't even tell like that something was done there. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Like I legit couldn't even tell where the the holes were. Like it was yeah, that it's insane. Like, it's like a little tiny, like this one I'm looking at right now, the one that's straight above my belly button. Mm -hmm. It's just like a little tiny black dot, like huh. a little tiny scab. That's it. <laughs> uh, like I, I, I mean, I'm not gonna like dissolvable stitches in there. Do uh, I? Well, I mean, I had them for a while. Like, and okay. I, there's like the tiniest bit still in there, but like it slowly goes down over time. They're like, yeah, it can take a long time for those to dissolve. Yeah, so. I mean, I still, I still have them. I can't even see them, but I have them. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I can like feel them. It's like they're kind of behind the belly button area. I mean, yeah, you're right. I do feel uh, them. Yeah, they kind of have them there, and then they just kind of yeah. after time go away. So it's kind of cool. It is pretty weird, you know, touching myself like live like this. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I did make you the. Uh, I made you the wine video since you made me the uh, video when I got mine out. You did make me the wine video. It was very lovely. Thank you. I was I was sitting there and I got to like. I I admit I fell asleep to it. <laughs> yeah, that's I was fine. I was watching it. I got like halfway through and I fell asleep. Because I was listening to it as I like was going to bed, and that yeah. was awesome. Hell yeah, that's all. That's all I wanted. I just wanted to make a nice ASMR chill video. I was uh, actually uh, I was speaking about this earlier before we started recording, but I was sitting out in my backyard earlier today or this evening, I should say, and it was dark, and I lit a campfire in my little like fire pit, and I was just sitting out there like in the cold in my trench coat just smoking my pipe and uh i actually was thinking about you uh not in like a gay way well maybe a little bit but like I was, but i was i was thinking about you and i was like man like i'm just listening to like a little crackling fire and i'm smoking my pipe and i can hear like the little night animals and shit out there oh, yeah. and like the sounds of the distant neighborhood and road and stuff mm -hmm. and i was like man this would be like a great little asmr thing for crendor that would you need to make another one I do. I need like to get. I need to get one of those like weird ASMR microphones though that are like <laughs> the super, ears on. like. And maybe not that one. <laughs> I can't afford that. Oh, like, yeah. but maybe like just a more sensitive microphone that way you can hear everything. Like you can hear like my like my bowels moving inside of my <laughs> intestine. Like it's so sensitive. Yeah. You know. I mean, a lot then of people can... just use the Blue Yeti. Yeah. Like it's honestly believe, not bad for that type because it has the uh, it has like surround sound pickup on it. Oh, that's right. I should try it because I just got a uh, I I bought a Blue Yeti about two or three months ago as like a sort of use this on the move microphone. Mm -hmm. And I I have a like I have a really tiny laptop that I got at Best Buy for like fifty dollars or something. Yeah. Like it's just a shitty little laptop. I only use it for like writing scripts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um and I carry it around in my backpack along with my books whenever I read in a coffee shop or something. Mm -hmm. And I also have a Blue Yeti microphone in there that I purchased, just like some old used Blue Yeti. Mm -hmm. And um because my original one is just covered in tape and it looks nasty and it doesn't work. And uh and I just carry that around so that if I ever have to like like you know I'm in a coffee shop and Crendor is like oh my god I have to talk to you right now it's an emergency I have a microphone like boom ready to go. Mm -hmm. So maybe I could take that little laptop out there, download OBS on it, hook up the Yeti, and like I'll try that actually. Yeah, do that for next time. Do it, and then we can cool. see if it worked or not. All right, yeah, I'll do an experiment. Yeah, 
And then uh, I'm going to do some ASMR testing too because I wanted to get my Goodnight Crendor channel going again a little bit. Goodnight uh, Crendor. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> I was going to, because I've been doing like all my Warhammer painting streams. But the thing with those is I'm always like, what's up, guys? All right. You know, here I am painting. And I was like, what if I just film me just not talking, just painting? Because then you can yeah. hear like the, like me building something or gluing or like paint brushing, just like the, mm -hmm. <laughs> and all that. And I was like, that'd probably be a, a pretty cool thing to listen to. Or even like, if I did like an ASMR Warhammer game and it's just no talking, it's just me like rolling dice and it's like a nice, like a, a dice rolling ASMR essentially. That'd be cool. So I'm trying to think of like things I can do with that for ASMR. And then, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I really like doing stuff on that channel. It's like, I think I've said it before, but that's kind of like my little like hobby channel. Like, I don't care if it makes Dude. money or not, but I just like it. Dude, what if we like, all right, this is just like, I'm, I'm throwing a, a small business idea at you. All right. All right. You ready? Mm -hmm. What if like, what if we made an ASMR channel? And it, we like put a requirement on each of us where it's like you have to upload like one ASMR video a month. Huh. Like it's sort of like and, and you have to be creative with it. Like you could do like the Warhammer painting thing like one mm. month, but you can't do it next month. Like okay. You have to think of something different. So like me, like I just immediately thought, oh, dude, I should like do one like I should take my laptop and my blue Yeti out to the park where I go trail hiking. And oh, yeah. There's like this, this log that I sit on like way out in the woods where like nobody goes out there except for like the deep trail hikers like me. Mm. And I'll just like sit there and you can like hear like the woods and stuff. Yeah. I like that. That's really cool. And it doesn't matter if you have like internet cause you're just recording on it. Mm -hmm. I could even make like, a, like I could quite literally make an ASMR video of me just editing a video on the pc <laughs> yeah You're like just wrong. like like typing on the keyboard you know i clicking, love that already like, i love those sounds yeah and then you just see me like making the video yeah and it's like but you see like the asmr at the same time or hear it i mean dude i like it that'd be, that'd be kind of cool yeah so did you want to yeah. like are you saying we make like a collaborative channel or like i make you make a channel for ASMR and then we go back and forth like on our channels, like making it. I'm saying make a collab channel. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, I thought for a time when we were talking about this podcast, I was like, ah, oh, maybe we should make, put it on a separate channel or something. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but I mean, I don't know. We'll talk about it more. Yeah. That's a good idea. I like that. You know, it could even be like, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm I'm trying to think. I mean, it could even be like, like a separate channel that has. This is me just spitballing an idea. Mm. It could be a separate channel that has not only like the future podcast episodes on it, but it also has our ASMR videos on it. Yeah, it's kind of like a channel for just anything we do collaboratively. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's a good neat. idea, actually. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I like it. Do, do like little vlogs and stuff. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, like we'll, each of we'll us could. Uh, yeah, there's like a bunch of ways we could do it. We'll see. We'll, yeah, we'll figure, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll talk about it more. Brainstorm in your free time. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, we've been recording for about 58 minutes now, so about an hour. So we probably should wrap up. Yeah. So honestly, is uh, is a fun time listening. To your gallbladder things instead of talking about my gallbladder thing. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. You've been replaced. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. I passed the torch on me. There, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Room in this town for two of us. <laughs> or something. Yeah. Well, there probably is, but there's no room for gallbladders in this town. That's right. <laughs> All right, though, guys. Well, thank you for listening to this uh, month's episode or first of this month's episode last since technically this is the end of November's episode. Shut up. Anyway, so thanks for watching the video or listening to it. Um, be sure to subscribe Wibbly to my YouTube channel, Nixium, as well as Crendor's YouTube channel, Crendor. Yep. 
and um, follow Crendor on Twitch and follow me on the Instagrams and all the other social medias and follow Crendor too. And uh, remember always. Um, uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Well. All right, man. It's time for your catchphrase. See ya. <laughs>